Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of System Level Design. I'm here with Steve Longoria of Soytech. Steve, we've heard a lot about the death of CMOS for a long time, probably more than a decade. What's going to change? Uh, really below 28 nanometer, CMOS is having scaling problems, and most of those problems are around the variability and the ability to continue to drive power performance down in your SOC designs, really as a result of VT variation in, this, in the basic technology. What SOI brings is it brings the ability to now with our FD SOI and the thin buried oxide to reduce significantly reduce variability in a customer's design. We can continue now to scale in traditional technology of planar on an FD SOI with a 2D structure and really delay the need for high volume mobile applications to go to a 3D structure. So it's really about managing power and performance. Now, what's new also besides that is our SOI technology delivers significantly higher power performance than bulk does today. So what does this do to the cost? I mean, is it going to be significant or are we actually going to pick up savings somewhere else sure. along the way? Excellent question. So on the cost side, because the SOI wafer integrates um, both isolation and provides a fully depleted channel for the transistor, you no longer need to do a lot of the implant steps, a lot of the stressor steps that you've done in the past, and it simplifies the front end process. At the same time, you're able to stay with all the design ground rules that you've used all along with your bulk. We use exactly the same back end align as bulk technology does today. We're really building a simpler front end transistor with a buried oxide layer, a thin buried oxide layer in the front end of line. The result is a process that is cheaper than bulk is today with delivering power performance advantages. Is SOI any harder to work with? So from a uh, design execution uh, with fully depleted SOI, we are really enabling continued design in the same fashion folks have done for years. So we're adding, as CMOS is running out of steam in traditional bulk CMOS at 20 to 28, we are extending the life of a planar transistor design with fully depleted SOI down to as low as 14. We have data to prove that within the uh, uh, IBM Alliance. What's the difference between fully depleted SOI versus partially depleted SOI? Sure, and with partially depleted SOI, which is the traditional SOI that a lot of people think of automatically, is uh, was the technology that Soytech partnered deeply with IBM and AMD to put into microprocessors. Very successful, enabled those companies to compete uh, and be co very uh, strong companies in, in the marketplace with high performance CPUs. What is different now is what we've done is we've, that was with a very thick buried oxide. It had things involved in it like history effect and it had to do different things in your, some of your EDA tools and your design rules which were compromises made to take advantage of the capability of partially depleted SOI. Mm -hmm. Today, we now have perfected the ability to make a very thin buried oxide with a very thin top silicon. When I say thin, I'm talking about a 25 nanometer buried oxide with a 15 nanometer top silicon with our smart cut technology. What that enables is the transistor now to be built on top of that undoped, fully depleted silicon top layer and now I can use that as my channel within my transistor, okay? So I have no history effect because my channel is only 15 nanometers thick, so that is gone, okay? I also, because it's a completely undoped channel, I have excellent electrostatic characteristics and my design needs to stay with the planar environment. We've been hearing a lot about trigate and FinFET's 3D st transistor structures for a while. Can SOI bias an extra node or two? We have proven with data is that fully depleted SOI enables designers to stay in the traditional planar transistor structure through 14 nanometer. We don't know if it'll go beyond, but all the data so far that we've pushed it says it's, it's great at 28, it's gonna deliver 40% more performance at the same power or 30% less power at the same performance. Okay. I, I think TSMC is on record as saying at 14 nanometers they're going to FinFETs, and I believe Global, Global Foundries is looking at the same thing. Mm -hmm. Does fully depleted SOI, in addition to FinFETs, buy you yet another note? So we're not sure. 
beyond 14. We're still working on that, but what we what we are sure of is is that fully depleted SOI for high performance mobile applications will scale down to 14 nanometer. Does SOI bring anything to FinFETs? Absolutely. The biggest challenges that we see about in the limited publications in the marketplace is a couple aspects. One is fin height control, which leads straight to variability and therefore the need for higher voltages. The second thing we see with FinFETs is it's very difficult to put the isolation in the wafer underneath the fin. Okay, so we have engineered a new wafer from Soytech that takes care of both of those problems. We have the ability to put a very thin top silicon on a thicker buried oxide, and that top silicon essentially defines the fin height, and the buried oxide becomes the embedded isolation between fin to fin. So it enables a simpler semiconductor process in the front end of the line for fin fets as well. And we see it delivering a better fin fet, a cheaper fin fet, and it actually accelerates customers' time to market at the foundry level because it's simpler to develop the technology because you don't have to develop the very complex steps to isolate fin to fin. As, we, as SOI proliferates in the marketplace, uh, does it become cheaper th the same way bulk CMOS did for years? Is there a, a way down from the current cost? There absolutely is. And Soytech is being very aggressive and very innovative in our business model to bring SOI to the broad market, multiple suppliers, as well as being very aggressive in our business model, both directly and indirectly with the foundries. And we see that we're positioning SOI as being ready for ultra high volume in the marketplace. One thing that you mentioned was the variability. A lot of the people working at the very front end are now starting to grapple with this. What's the, what's the problem there and how do we solve it? So that's just, this is the reason CMOS is dying, because of variability and leakage. You're no longer able to continue to scale and reduce your power because you have so many uh, dopants that you're putting in, stressors we're putting in to drive performance, but at the same time, they're creating variability in latching up your SRAM. So you have to have a higher voltage to close the SRAM. And that is why, in my view, that uh, CMOS is really hitting an end of its life. Is the supply chain set up to deal with uh, fully depleted SOI as opposed to uh, CMOS? So step one is we're proving the technology and finishing our qualifications this year. and We'll be ramping into production with our first customers early next year as this rolls out into products. At the same time, we're enabling our very close partner, SEH, in Japan to manufacture this technology. And as I mentioned earlier, we are opening up access to this technology to our partners and other suppliers and, and position it for ultra-high volume in the marketplace. Steve Longoria, thank you very much for your time.